At WIT Singapore last year, two travel tech evangelists did predict that the industry would change faster than ever in 2020. But we doubt that even they saw the COVID comets coming. We thought we'll then invite them back for reprisal of the future, see how things have changed in their view. So please welcome Timothy O'Neill Dunn, Principal, 777 Pub and Partners, Johnny Thorson, Vice President, Strategy and Innovation, American Express Digital Labs. Thank you and um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or in Johnny and my case, uh, we're just suffering from a damned hangover. So it's the, uh, the future reimagined version two. Next slide, please. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, it was derailed and we're in deep trouble because when we look at this, we thought, ah, the future was going to be great, but it's not. Everything has been derailed by something we didn't see coming. So are you ready for the journey into the next generation of travel? Yeah, well, it's derailed. Next slide, please. So let's look now and we can see, sadly, everything, everything we're doing is just darker. Let's look at these key areas of change. What we can see is that all the six areas we looked at before are just darker. Planning, booking, planning, fantasizing, maybe, identity and safety, payment and settlement. We're going to examine all of these areas now. So let's take a little walk through this and see how well we're doing. Next slide, please. As you can see, let's start with the obvious thing, which is how do we think about travel? How do we start at the beginning? And in the past, we used to think, oh, it was great. But now there's the flight to safety. What is safe and can I get there? Trust is very personal, but it's king. Decades of progress has been set back. It's a harder, deeper planning and much more reviewing. The emergence of true I think that we, we've got now people who should be trusted, not influencers who are fleeting. Explicit becomes harder. Implicit has a long way to go. Pricing becomes lower in priority than these other things. The importance of leisure and VFR replace that of business travel. Next slide, please. Johnny, I'm going to hand it over to you now. Yeah. Thank you very much, Tim. And uh, as you said, yeah, it's the midnight oil here on, uh, on, the, east, on the West Coast. So... Um, the next area we uh, we looked at last year was identity, and uh, it's interesting how identity has evolved uh, dramatically in in one year, and it now comes with uh, the kind of the undeniable truth that you have to give up your privacy when you want to travel. So not only do we need to know who you are, of course, but we also need to more or less know where you have been, where you will go. Uh, and the question is how big that window will be before and after travel. Uh, doing travel, there will be obviously need to know where you are. But we also have a lot of uncertainty about, you know, where can I go? What are the rules or conditions? Uh, we've heard of several COVID-19 related startups and new product offerings coming. All that is great, but how do we get a reliable channel of information delivery? That's one of the biggest questions. Next slide, please. So um, once we have decided to kind of go somewhere and we actually managed to, to kind of get a booking done and uh, get through the, the maze of identity and uh, safety, we need to pay. And uh, payment is probably one of the areas that has really been exposed as being completely inadequate for what we, what we need today. Uh, what happened with the airline refund crisis around the world is just completely unacceptable in 2020. Uh, and, you know, we think that uh, this is an area that is so ripe for dramatic innovation. And uh, it's not impossible to imagine a world where the airline only gets your money when you have flown. How about that? Perhaps you pay a small upfront fee for the right to be flown somewhere, and then the money will be released by a smart contract when you leave the plane in the other end, potentially half when you board and they get ready for takeoff. New way of thinking, it can certainly be done. All it requires is for people to demand it. Next slide, please. And uh, as we go traveling, we get to the airport, and uh, the airport is also one of those places that have changed dramatically. Uh, last year, we talked about overcrowding, lack of capacity, uh, lack of landing slots, and a lack of pilots and planes, everything. Uh, now we have a surplus, uh, which means airports can potentially become repurposed 
and used for completely new kind of uh, ob- objectives. So it will be interesting to see what happens in the airport as we look forward. Uh, they are metropolises on their own. There's lots of land. It's high quality. It can be used for many other things in addition to moving a few people now and then. Uh, creative thinking will be in high demand in this space. Next slide, please. What do you Tim? Okay, so let's talk about this. You know, the flying isn't just as important now. A lot of people are being encouraged to go, but maybe even just go local. There's no big solutions here, unfortunately. There's lots of little ones and far less movement, clearly. IATA came out a couple of days ago and said we're looking at a more than 60% down on the year. There's going to be shorter travel. Perhaps we even see an, uh, an aggressive improvement in the idea of uh, uh, mobile and, and perhaps even things like um, short-haul UAVs. There's less need for these major airports, as, as Johnny was saying. The, the problem with, with hub and spoke is that some areas of scale start to fall away. Now we think that travel times will never get shorter. Supersonic will probably never see the light of day. What about tourism? And s- cruise ships, there's going to be fewer, but much bigger and much better managed. Perhaps not even in the near term will we see cruising come back. Whatever it takes to recover, we think virtual trips are going to explode. So next slide, please. So let's look at uh, staying now. Stay with people you know and trust. This, it, this is both virtual and physical. The growth of the small utility room to compete with Airbnb. Think of uh, businesses like uh, Citizen M. Hotels emerge as major uses perhaps of renovated city older buildings because there's going to be an absolute plethora of uh, office space, as we all know, just uh, just anybody who is into office space. Oh, maybe that was Donald Trump. Oh, never mind about him. Accommodation merges with workspaces. Many brands will disappear, we think. Leisure spaces will replace malls, and perhaps even an emergence of medical tourism as a low-cost secondary um, uh, for use of these facilities. Uh, next slide, please, and then over to you, Johnny. So, um Kind of, if you think through these uh, kind of rapid fire areas of uh, automatic change, right? Uh, all of them will have one thing in common: they have to be connected by a new fabric of technology. And uh, we have unlimited amount of data available, uh, and suddenly we actually have a much smaller industry kind of to play with for a while, which could free up uh, creative thinking and resources to literally start cleaning up the old legacy infrastructure. Uh, hopefully we will not hear any more of uh, Edifact and XML. Uh, it has to become a thing of the past in the pre-COVID world, right? So the technologies we're looking at here will become so instrumental for what will happen. Uh, we're talking about touchless. Guess what? Voice-driven interfaces are co- probably as touchless as it gets. So that might see an acceleration. Travel broker powered completely by AI. That was one of our predictions last year. I actually think that will accelerate because no human can keep on top of all the information that's flowing right now about rules, restrictions, requirements, etc. We need the brokers to fire up quickly. And then we need kind of technology suppliers who build with an open mindset. They build something that others can connect on top so we can move faster together. And through it all, we need trust and safety and transparency. Nobody can do this on their own with a closed mindset. Next slide, please. And this is probably the area where we're going to see the biggest change. Uh, how we meet. This is a great example, right? It, it feels acceptable right now to look at each other uh, through the lens of Skype or Teams or Zoom or whatever we have been playing with the last seven, eight months. But uh, that's not going to make it. Uh, we're going to see gaming technology move aggressively into the meeting space. Uh, And if you think of games as you know them, right, they already have capabilities to let people interact, to let people do things together in the games. And we've seen the first early examples of virtual conferences. Uh, I mean, this is how I would have imagined we were meeting today uh, at the WIT event, right? We should be able to interact as avatars, go over to each other and have a conversation perhaps even meet in a virtual private meeting room. Uh, 
the idea of traveling somewhere to meet somebody will quickly become a thing of the past. You will do it when you have to. But uh, you know, I would rather actually get up at midnight for one hour and uh, do this session and then go back to bed and be at home than fly to the other side of the world. So I really think the changes are bigger than you expect. Over to you, Tim. Okay, so let's look at this issue. I'd like to, to sort of dive a little bit into this issue of, of trust and identity. So what we're going to see is that the, the travel profile and the digital wallet and health passport, we think those are going to come together. They will be digital, obviously, but now they're going to be verifiable because we absolutely need to know that you are who you are. Are you a safe person? Because there is always this two, two-way street. Am I safe? Are the people around me safe? And is it safe? So this is going to change things, we think, pretty dramatically. Uh, next slide, please. So hopefully what you can see now is there's this new reality that's emerging. Um, and what you can see here is that suppliers won't necessarily have as much information as, uh, as they thought they could get on you, uh, whether Google will be able to know as much about you or whether that information will be co-opted. But governments will. Governments probably must. They will assert their authority over data and this will cause conflict. China will point to its success and being the model to follow. But as you can see, all of these things need to interact and we must have degree of verifiable. Uh, next slide, please. And then over back to you, Johnny. So um, one of our predictions last year uh, was pretty spot on, actually, because we did say that uh, it would be about reducing the human touch. Uh, of course, we didn't foresee COVID as part of that. We just foresee, foresee all the kind of the lack of resources overall in the industry, given the massive volume of people traveling. Uh, now it's going to be about reducing the human touch and go completely touchless for kind of safety and, uh, and security reasons. Uh, so it's another acceleration of something that was already going on. And again, we've seen some good examples of early solutions uh, appearing in this area. It's too expensive to do these things with people. That's the sad reality. So um, touchless will survive and accelerate. Next slide, please. And, uh, and kind of the final slide uh, is the kind of the green wave, the sustainability wave, uh, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, a lot of people thought it would slow down or potentially even kind of go away when COVID hit. We actually seeing clear signs of the opposite. Uh, Large corporate buyers are accelerating their sustainability programs in their travel program, and the developers of new plane and new technologies are also accelerating. And we expect to see the first kind of non-jet fuel powered planes before the end of this decade. Uh, and terms like BIHA or hydrogen powered and of course electric planes will become normality probably faster than you think. You will definitely be able to fly in one of these before 2030. Uh, and that's exciting because that's the future of the travel industry, to go back to growth in a greener way. Next slide. So really, this is all we really wanted to say to you. Um, I think what we, we thought is what's next, what is next, and where are we? So yes, data truly is the new oil. Winners will be those who are at the top of the crack who can turn the data oil into the kerosene of knowledge. There will be a major exodus of humans from the travel industry, very sadly. Many of us on this call and on our industry will be gone very shortly. We will be very nostalgic for the glory days of the past. How long is it going to get to, till we're back at 2019? A long time. We'll be more conscious of the constraints of the planet. And Johnny, a final word from you and the next slide, please. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, it is possible to travel, right? Uh, both you and I, Tim, have been on the road. Uh, and we both saw the kind of the new empty airport world, uh, which was fascinating and scary at the same time. Uh, and I think uh, we all want to travel again. But uh, my guess is it will be more on the private front that we want to travel for experiences than for work. Uh, and that's interesting for an industry that was used to the biggest money coming from the corporate side. That might not be the case anymore. 
no matter what, this is a really exciting future. And uh, you know, thanks a lot for, for giving us a chance to to share our thoughts. Over to you, Sifun. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Johnny and uh, Timothy, for that very uh, sobering, uh, yet real, and in some ways, in a twisted way, rather exciting view of the future. So I, we, I'm just going to go to a question from the audience right away. Uh, and it, the question is, what do the futurists think about NDC and airline connectivity to keep it, you know, real? Johnny, you want to take it first? Yeah, I, I have to say, uh, it, it looks like some airlines will, will push ahead with NDC because they have invested too much to probably shut it down. Others have clearly decided to pull out of it. But uh, I mean, just yesterday we saw uh, an announcement from Lufthansa about uh, their so-called direct connect. And uh, I mean, reading through that, uh, it was the most complex connectivity I have seen anyone provide yet for, for a corporate co a traveler to book their travel. I, I simply don't believe NDC, as it's designed right now, can survive. It's too expensive. It's too inefficient. I would rather an airline create a net new way for me to book and pay and settle with them, including, you know, guaranteed refund the second I cancel. Uh, I I don't think they can make the old NDC structure work. Uh, that's my view. Okay, so I, we I, have. I have to I have to agree with him. I think just if I can add just one little comment. The, the, this complexity is not affordable. Delta has already pulled out, uh, and and we're going to see that sort of thing happening. So. I think we've got to be all be very careful. Simplicity and low cost is going to be the order of the day for the next two to three years, maybe even up to five years. Okay, so we have four minutes left and I have a ton of questions. Uh, Johnny, what you said about pay after you fly, that that sort of goes into that model right now, which is exploding, you know, in e-commerce, which is buy now, pay later. Yeah. Exactly that model, right? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, did you did you want to add to that? Well, I, no, I, I I agree. I think I think we're, we're all in agreement about that. Okay, good. So I want to pick up on your uh, the two of you talking about identity and how identity is your profile, your wallet, and your health that is then digital and verifiable. In that case, and you said that governments would rule, right? So therefore, is it going to come from government tech? Because like in Singapore now. We have our, you know, a lot of the safe entry and the wallet. So, you, do you see an amalgamation of apps that are coming from government that will then come up to the industry? I think that's a that's a little bit of a tricky question. I I don't think that governments are going to replace. I just said that the suppliers will have less influence and the influence of the government on these digital identities, and it, it, it's important because at the end of the day. It's trust but verify. And where are you going to get that verification from? In almost most countries of the world, you have a, a real identity. The U.S. Is, the, is one of the very few countries like the U.K. that has to rely upon things like driver's license uh, to verify your identity. So I think you're, you're going to be seeing governments really turning up the heat on what is uh, identity. Okay. Um, yeah. I can honestly write our current framework in the IATA kind of aviation world, it's so old and outdated around this physical passport, which can be faked, which is why, you know, everything is so uh, so manual based. Uh, and if governments could somehow find a way of working together digitally, that would be amazing. But that's highly yes. unlikely. So I think as we, 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 we wish that that was the case, that the, the governments, you know, who've done a terrible job with the, with the health side, that they could, in fact, start to learn to cooperate because we're not seeing that cooperation and we need to see it. Yeah, I, I guess we'll get used to having, you know, at least two identity apps on our phones when we travel. You know, one where we're coming from, one where we're going to, and they'll just be part of the game. Yeah, I mean, you did say that Asia was leading the way in this tech, right? So so the, your next point, I think one of you said virtual trips. So what did you think of, of, about Amazon launching its virtual trips? I, I think it's very aspirational. Um, and it, it's going to be one of those things that, that happen because people are going to be so antsy. I know personally, Johnny and I both felt for different reasons that we needed to travel. And actually, it was very easy to travel when we actually got round to it. It was the preparation for travel. So people are still going to want to experience other things. The acceleration of virtual 
and that merging with uh, uh, what they say is augmented reality. I think we're going to have a whole lot of things like that occurring. Right. Okay, yeah. and then and then both of you also talked about repurposing of airports, which goes into offices, which goes into hotels. What do you think of the Citizen M subscription model? Do you see that being rolled out more across hotel groups? Uh, I think so, but uh, it's also interesting when when you go in and you know you read the fine print, right? It it's not a very efficient way to manage right now. Uh, the booking process is uh, kind of direct with a five hour response time. They they notify you about that, and the company has to kind of keep track of these uh, subscription rooms, which means uh, how are they managed in the corporate travel program? Okay, how do they okay. feel into duty of care? That will be that will be some challenges, but it's a great initiative for a new way of managing pricing, which is again, we will go to invisible pricing increasingly. Uh, you will not be able to find the best price in, in a meta search. If I can add just one thing, Sihun, just that if anybody's read Howard Schultz's books, uh, he talks about the third way. Our need for the third place, which is other than, than, the, uh, than home, we need to have another place. So I think the third place is likely to, to de be diminished but we need to have another place. And that's why the Citizen M idea of having a place that you can go to. And we're going to see other things like that on the subscription side. I mean, look, Volaris is even offering subscription flights. So I think yeah. we're going to see an emergence of these new financial models. Well, actually, that sets us up really beautifully for the next uh, session, which Anytime I am soon. now. We'll set it up for Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for staying up in the middle of the night and really, you know, being so futuristic with us. Thank you so much and see you in the ether since both of you are not going to come to Singapore soon anymore. Bye. We want to come. We want to be there. Bye. Bye. Bye.